we're going to show you how we pull a vacuum on a vehicle AC system. You pull a vacuum on the AC system initially to see if there's a leak. If the gauge readings hold, you know there's not a leak. If the readings don't hold, you have a leak in your system. You pull a vacuum the second time for two reasons. One, to determine if there's a leak in the system, so whatever repairs you did, you want to see if those hold and if those are good. The second reason is that you want to draw all the moisture out of the system before you add the refrigerant. It's a vacuum pump that we borrowed from an auto parts store. And this is the vacuum pump oil that you need to run this pump. You see the level on it is low. It's down here, it needs to be up here. So we're going to add some of this oil to the vacuum pump. Take the cap off. See that? You're gonna add it right in there. Sister put a little oil in this container. She's gonna pour it in that opening there. Keep adding oil until it gets to this level right there. All right, y'all. There you go. Put the cap back on. You're good to go. Our gauges are set up right here. The lines are leading down. Sister's going to remove the cap and then put on the valve. When you're putting these valves on, you want them in the fully closed position. Sister's going to show you what happens if you have it in the fully open position. See that pin in the center of the valve? That's fully raised or pulled back. Now she's going to open that valve and you'll see what happens to that pin. It moves down and then it will press on that Schrader valve. That's why you want them in the fully closed position when you put them on. Sister's going to put the line on the high side now. She's going to pull this quick disconnect back push it down, then you wiggle it to make sure it doesn't come off. She's going to show you how easy it comes off. There you go. Sister's going to put the line on the low side now. She's taking the cap off the low side. This is the supply line, what we call the supply line, the yellow line and it has a green gasket on it. You want to make sure that that gasket is not cracked. If it is, you have to replace it. Supply line is on the gauge side. Now we're going to put this end of the line onto the pump. This is the on-off switch for the vacuum. It's in the off position. The valves on the car, the high and the low, are both in the closed position. That means counterclockwise. To open them, you go clockwise. The gauges are in the closed position. To close the gauges, you turn them clockwise. To open them, you turn them counterclockwise. So keep in mind, the gauges for open and closed position are the opposite of what the valves are. Make sure the gauges on the low side and the high side are in the closed position. So now we're going to use the pump to vacuum out the system. What you do first is you open these valves, again counterclockwise, open them all the way. The valves are open. The gauges are still closed. So now you turn on your pump now you open the lines on your gauges. Fully open position. You hear the different sound on that pump. Sisters open the high side now. Look at the mist coming out of that vacuum pump. The only reason you're doing an initial vacuum on the system is to determine if you have a leak somewhere in the system. You're not drawing it down the system or vacuuming it out initially to pull out all the moisture. That's on the second stage of what you're going to be doing. So 
So right now, we're just trying to determine if we have a leak in the system. All right, y'all, we have threaded rain, so we have to turn off the vacuum pump. So here's what you do before you shut the pump off. You close these gauges. Sisters closing them, turning them clockwise. Now the gauge set is off. You want to make sure the valves on the ports are in the fully open position. So leave those open with the gauges closed. Now you turn off the pump. Remove the service line from the pump. What you want to do now is look at this green area, the inches of mercury area, and see what your reading is. So take a picture of the gauges and make sure you see what the reading is. Let the vacuum hold on it with these gauges left on overnight. That's what I recommend, overnight. Then the next morning come out or next afternoon, whatever you can do, and see if that reading, that dial is in the same position. If that dial has advanced, you know that you have a leak in your system because the vacuum isn't holding. It's the next morning, it did rain overnight. So we put the gauges right there. Came out this morning and it held. We know we have a leak because the Freon leaked out, or most of it. Because the vacuum on the system held, what we think our problem is is a leaking Schrader valve. And here's why. Once you put the valves on the ports and vacuum the system, it's a closed system unless you have a leak in another location other than the Schrader valves. So now sister's going to close these valves by turning them counterclockwise on both the high side and the low side. And she's doing that to raise those pins up off the Schrader valve so we can remove them. Sister's going to remove the valve on the low side. system is open, meaning you had a leak, or you're repairing your system, or changing another part, you always want to change the receiver dryer. Now we're going to put the lines back on and do our final drawdown vacuum of the system because we have the dryer receiver in and a new Schrader valve. So remember when you put the high side and the low side valve on, they're in the fully closed position. Open them all the way counterclockwise. Make sure they're on, just give them a tug. We're gonna attach the supply line. We're gonna make sure these gauges are in the fully closed position, clockwise. She's going to open the valves there so it depresses the Schrader valve. Fully open and on the low side as well. With the two valves, fully open on the high and low, and the lines closed on the gauge set. Fully open those gauges. You want to close? the lines before you turn off the pump. Now we're going to turn off the pump. Remove the service line from the pump. Now we're going to let the vacuum hold overnight on the AC system and see if our readings are the same in the morning as they are right now. It's the next day. It's actually afternoon. The gauge is held. That means the vacuum held. We're going to fill it now with refrigerant and oil. And that's how we pull a vacuum on a vehicle AC system. Hope it helps and happy DIYing.